Hello from Leader Dogs from the Blind and welcome to our webinar, You're Going Where? GPS Training at Leader Dog. My name is David Lachlan and I'm the Director of Programs here at Leader Dogs for the Blind. This is our fourth webinar we have hosted to allow you to learn more about the programs and services we offer to empower people who are blind or vision impaired with lifelong skills for independent travel. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on our website within one week. For those people joining us via phone, if you have any questions after this webinar, please call 888-777-5332 and ask to speak with a client services representative. Our client service representatives are available Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For those people joining, or, joining us online, you may enter questions at any time using the chat bubble in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Our presentation will take about 15 minutes, followed by 15 minutes for questions and answers. If we have a lot of questions, we can stretch a little longer. So I'd like to introduce today's presenters. First will be Erica Erke. Erica is a Certified Orientation and Mobility Specialist and our Manager of Extended Services. She oversees our Orientation and Mobility Training, our Summer Experience Camp and our GPS Services. Erica is currently a member of the ACV REP O&M Subject Matter Expert Committee and a past president of Michigan AER. She has presented at several international conferences on the topics of guide dog readiness, alternative models of orientation and mobility, and accessible GPS. Our second presenter is Christy Plesher. Christy is a certified O&M specialist and a graduate of Western Michigan University. She has been an O&M specialist in Alabama, Ohio, and now Michigan. Over to you, Erica and Christy. Thanks, David. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. LeaderDog continues to be committed to the use and integrated, uh, integration of travel-related technologies for our clients. There are several technologies designed specifically to help people with low vision um, and blindness. General categories include technologies that assist with daily living, including medical needs, learning and literacy, accessing print information, accessing electronic information, producing written communication, and travel. We see many products monthly that are in various stages of development. As part of the Leader Dog strategic plan, and in keeping with our mission, we continue to monitor, investigate, and test independent daily travel technologies. We look at two primary adaptive technologies, which include electronic travel aids, and electronic orientation aids. Electronic orientation aids are products that provide orientation and navigation information, and electronic travel aids provide mobility information, such as obstacle avoidance and obstacle detection. Accessible GPS is an electronic orientation aid and has been one of our primary um, focuses here at LeaderDog. Since 2005, LeaderDog has been using GPS to enhance travel for our clients. We've utilized several different devices. The primary reason for this has been the advancement in technology. These devices have evolved and become much easier to use. A person using one of these devices does not have to be tech savvy. The evolution of the devices we've used includes the Human Wear Tracker Pro, the Human Wear Tracker Breeze, the Capsis Captain, the Human Wear Tracker Breeze Plus, and currently we are utilizing the Human Wear Victor Reader Track. So, why GPS? We, use, um, we feel that GPS and the use of a guide dog or a cane is like peanut butter and jelly. They just go together. GPS provides helpful orientation information and a leader dog or a cane provides the mobility information. 
when we're initially teaching GPS, uh, when we were initially teaching our first GPS classes, we listened to what our clients were saying and decided to put some facts and data to what they were saying um, and feeling and experiencing. Our published research with Steve Legro and Paul Panchilla showed that 92% felt more confident when traveling with a GPS. 92% also felt more capable when traveling with a GPS. 90% felt like they were a less anxious traveler when traveling with a GPS. In addition to that, 70% of people that we surveyed were traveling more in their uh, immediate neighborhood, and 63% had started to experience uh, travel outside their immediate neighborhood. So after all of this, you're probably wondering, why not GPS apps? In an ongoing client survey, uh, we've asked, we asked our clients uh, how they were utilizing GPS. And eight, while 86% of our clients utilize a smartphone, uh, when it comes to apps, they don't feel quite as comfortable. Um, especially when it comes to GPS apps. 60% reported that they never or infrequently use GPS apps. 40% moderately to extensively use GPS. But in fact, uh, when we did a little bit more uh, digging, 45% uh, of our clients that do have a smartphone never use um, apps in general. Clients share that this, they primarily don't prefer to use an app for GPS travel because of the cost and use of data and it, what they experience it when they use GPS app is battery drain, a quicker battery drain, so they have to be more strategic with their use of a GPS app. So what kind of information does GPS provide that aids in our travel? It actually provides us with what we call WWH information. That stands for where am I, where do I want to go, and how am I going to get there? And Christy is going to give you a bit more information on that. Hi, everyone. So. Before we look at issuing GPS to any of our clients, we want to make sure they're traveling with some basic orientation and mobility skills. So we want them to be able to get around effectively without the use of a GPS device before we introduce it. So to us, that means uh, basic cane skills to identify obstacles within a walking path, um, the orientation skills to plan and execute routes independently, the ability to cross streets independently, and then uh, the ability to solve problems along routes. So if the GPS were to offer a route where a sidewalk was closed for construction, we want to make sure that our clients have the ability to work around that and still get to their destination uh, while the GPS is catching up with them. Um, these requirements are also required before someone would be accepted into our guide dog class. So we sort of make the assumption if you are guide dog ready, then you're also ready to work with a GPS device. In our O&M program, we handle it on a more case-by-case -case basis. So we look at each individual client, what their goals are and how they're currently traveling, and then make a determination if that's something we want to pursue. Um, and then in our third program, the summer uh, experience camp, Humanware, the manufacturer of the device we're currently issuing, has actually um, provided uh, GPS devices for all of our campers for the past several years. So we've been able to weave that instruction into our camp so that um, when our campers go home, who are, they're 16 and 17 years old, when, when they get home, they feel a little bit more confident using this tool to explore their home environments but also their college or career environments or wherever they end up transitioning to as they uh, make that move out of high school. So the reason we have these 
GPS requirements is because there are limitations to GPS devices. Um, one of those is something we call the urban canyon effect, where if someone is traveling through a large city with tall buildings around them, the height of those buildings can block the signal from the satellite from reaching the GPS device. Same thing can happen with overhangings or uh, heavy, wet foliage. So um, the user might lose reception temporarily in those environments, so that's why it's important to us that our uh, travelers are able to, to problem solve and work through that without the device. Um, and then additionally, technology can fail, fail for other reasons. Your battery can die, you can miss an update, whatever it is. Um, we don't want someone to feel stranded just because their device isn't working temporarily. Um, another limitation is these devices do not detect obstacles in uh, a walking path. Erica touched on some other electronic travel aids that do, but GPS is not one of them. So that's why we want to make sure people have good cane skills before we introduce GPS. It's also not a compass. So it won't tell someone which direction they're facing if they're standing still. You have to actually have the device in motion before you can get an accurate reading on a cardinal direction. And then the device also makes the assumption that you're traveling down the middle of the road. So it's important for the user to be able to fall back on those good O&M skills to make the determination which side of the road their destination will be on because that's not information they'll get from the device. Um, and then lastly, it's not a two-way communication system. So although it'll tell the user where they are located in space, there's no way for someone else to track the location of that device from a different location. So if someone were to find themselves lost or disoriented, they couldn't just call someone and say, look up my location on my Victor Reader Trek like you might be able to do with an iPhone. It really only works for the person holding the physical device. Um, so there's three different travel modes that we work with our clients in. The one we use most often is pedestrian mode. So that's any time someone is traveling on foot. Uh, so just by having the device turned on without pressing any buttons, it'll tell you which road you're traveling on, which direction you're traveling in, and it will announce upcoming intersections as they're approached. So what this does is it really brings street signs back into the equation for the traveler who wasn't able to access that information visually. And then from there, you can do all sorts of other things with the device, of setting landmarks and creating routes, but that's a little bit beyond the scope of this presentation. Um, the second travel mode we uh, work with our clients on is motorized mode. So it will work in a car or a bus or an Uber just like any other GPS device. And the same is pedestrian mode. As long as it's turned on, it's going to announce street direction of travel and your uh, upcoming intersections. I think this mode is particularly interesting for our summer experience campers because they're 16 and 17 years old. So while their peers are learning how to drive and gaining independence that way, to me this feels very age appropriate in learning what um, our campers' role is when they're in the car. So. No more just taking a snooze and riding in the back seat. They are active participants uh, when they're riding around with their friends. And the last travel mode is open area. So once this device recognizes that it's 100 feet or more from a known road, it'll automatically toggle into open area mode. And at that point, it starts giving directions as the crow flies, so clock face directions. This is really useful somewhere like a college campus where maybe you don't have a perfect grid pattern in your sidewalks. They tend to be a bit more scattered um, and perfect right and left hand turns aren't as useful as clock face directions. Um, so like Erica said, since February of this year, we have been issuing the Victor Reader Trek. Um, and our clients have the opportunity not only to explore leader dogs training environments, but once they're familiar with the device, they can go home and explore their home environments. And since this device comes with the entire map of the United States and Canada, they can just as easily travel across the country to visit family or go on vacation and independently explore those environments as well. Um, another really 
really cool thing about this device is it's actually a two-in-one product. So while you're not using it as a GPS device, you can toggle it into a media playback mode. So clients are able to access audiobooks, uh, podcasts, and internet radio. And the way we've used that here is we have loaded guide dog lectures onto the devices before we send them out to our clients. So that does two things. It gives them the opportunity to learn a little bit about guide dog class before they're coming in, but it also gives them an extra excuse to play around with it a little bit and get familiar with the interface and a little bit more comfortable with it um, in whatever mode you're using it in. So they feel that much more prepared and confident when they come into class. And then the last thing uh, Humanware has done is they've already included technology in the device for iBeacons and FM radio whenever those updates come available. So um, all Humanware has to do is push out an update and then the user will get a notification on their device, they'll run the update, and then those um, functions will be available at that time as well. So, Thank you all for participating in our presentation about how we approach GPS at LeaderDog, and we're looking forward to questions. Okay, so we will now move on to questions and answers. Again, for those joining us by phone, please direct your questions to our Client Services Department at 888-777-5332. Again, for those online, you can type your questions into the chat bubble in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Okay, so we've received several questions, so I'm going to jump in and start asking those. So the first question we have, I'm in the process um, of applying for my fourth leader dog. Could I receive the GPS as a cane user? So if you are in the uh, process of applying for a leader dog, it's certainly something, uh, GPS is certainly something that you would be eligible for once you have been approved for leader dog training. Our process for um, getting GPS to our clients is once a client has been assigned to their guide dog class, which is generally uh, eight to six weeks before um, they come in for training, um, then they have an opportunity to uh, have their device mailed to them ahead of time, and that's when our support process uh, begins as well. Okay, so uh, if I'm ac accepted into guide dog training, do I have to learn to use the GPS device? Uh, no, so it is an option for anyone from the U.S. or Canada. Unfortunately, our international clients, it's not an option for because those maps aren't available on the device. Um, but it's not something that we would insist anyone learn if that's not something that they're interested in. Okay. Uh, what's the battery life? The battery life on the Victor Reader truck is about 10 hours of sustained use. So you have to be on the go an awful lot to use up that battery. We recommend uh, that our clients keep it on the charger if it's not in use so that they know where to locate it and it's ready to go when they're ready to go. All righty. Um, the next question, I got my guide dog in 2011 and have the Captain GPS, um, but it no longer works. How can I get the latest version of the GPS leader dog is using? So there is two ways that you can go about uh, getting the, the latest version that we're using. Uh, you would be uh, coming into a new guide dog class, or you're welcome to purchase uh, the unit from a local uh, Humanware vendor, or go onto Humanware's uh, website, and uh, you can locate it there. Okay. Um, why is uh, GPS training not for all O&M clients? Uh, so some of those basic O&M requirements that I talked about would be part of the reason why. So uh, if a client is coming in for their first experience with O&M training, then they wouldn't yet be ready to work with a device. It can be a little bit of an overwhelming amount of information if you're not already a very um, efficient traveler. And then the other reason would be because our O&M program is five days. So someone might get to the point where they're GPS ready, but we don't have that extra time to really dive into GPS training. So that wouldn't be as appropriate at that time. Okay, thank you. 
Um, if I prefer to use the GPS app on my phone, do you have any recommendations? Many of our clients, we actually look to recommendations for, and what uh, a lot of our clients tell us is they're using the standard uh, GPS app on their phone, which would be Google Maps or Apple Maps. Um, however, uh, many of our clients have told a, that do utilize a GPS app have um, recommended Nearby Explorer or the Seeing Eye GPS. Uh, some also use uh, Blind Square, Lazario, or Soundscape. There's lots of versions out there, um, so uh, test away. And if you have one you like, please share it with us. So this question is a little off topic, but certainly worth asking for us to answer. Uh, I've not been able to complete the required video for approval for my application. Are there any workarounds that LeaderDog can offer? Sure, I'll take that. This is Erica, and um, our client services team is happy to explain ways in which you can get that accomplished. We have field representatives uh, that can uh, meet you to get your video recorded, or um, possibly there's a Lions Club member, a family or a friend in your environment that can help out with your video as well. Okay, thank you, Erica. Um, what is an iBeacon? So iBeacons are a form of indoor navigation. So it's sort of like GPS for indoor environments, I guess. So right now, iBeacon technology is available in some places, but it connects to iPhone apps or, or any smartphone app. Um, so as of right now, there's no option to use your outdoor uh, orientation device with the indoor navigation options, which are the iBeacons. Um, but it's really great that HumanWare has that available, that software already installed, so um, the device will just be that much more useful when that update comes out. Um, do do LeaderDog use iBeacons? Oh, we actually do have a few beacons on um, our property that we experiment, experiment with um, throughout our Canine Development Center and to aid in the tour. Um, that is available to uh, folks. We have uh, FAR beacons, Foresight Augmented Reality beacons, uh, located strategically throughout to provide some additional information in regards to our tour. And we have them located in a couple other strategic locations as well so that our clients can utilize them. Okay. So I have a Trekker Breeze that was issued, but it doesn't seem to work as well as GP, uh, as far work. Sorry, does not work well as far as GPS since I got it in 2014. Can client services help with this? Yeah, by all means, give us a call. We're here for support. Um, unfortunately, technology does become outdated. The speed of technology has There's a statistic that shares that within the last five years. Uh, that the speed of technology has grown by 32 times. So if we use that in that calculation, since you received your GPS in 2014, the breeze is probably getting a bit outdated and um, it may not work as well. Who can I get in touch with when I'm totally lost with the Victor Reader? Please give our Leader Dog O&M team a call. Um, or reach out to client services at 888-777-5332, and they will direct you to us, or you can reach them at clientservices at leaderdog.org, and they'll forward you along to us. I would add to that, too, that um, HumanWare's customer service team is wonderful, and they have uh, virtual training that you can just call in and use your keypad to access. It's been really useful for a lot of people as well. Okay, and I think our final question, what headphones would you recommend that I use with the device? That's a great question. Because uh, the Victor Reader Trek is Bluetooth capable, um, we wouldn't normally recommend using headphones or e earbuds with GPS, but because of the, the Bluetooth capabilities of the Victor Reader Trek, um, the Aftershock uh, bone or any other bone conducting headphones um, work very well with this product. Okay, so thank you, Erica and Christy.
Um, so we'll stop there for today. If you would like to learn more about our programs and services, please visit our website at leaderdog.org. You can call us at 888-777-5332 or email us at clientservices at leaderdog.org. Uh, all services are provided free of charge. Professionals with questions can contact our extended services department at 248-659-5053 or email extendedservices at leaderdog.org. Those who have joined us on, online will be receiving a short three-question survey via email. We'd really appreciate hearing from you so we can make our future webinars easy to access and meaningful. Thank you all for joining us today.